Hi, my name is Zach Copert, and I'm currently a senior software engineer at GitHub. Uh, I'm really excited to be here with you today at the Intersource Commons. There's a lot of different perspectives uh, that everyone brings to this, and I love that. Uh, my perspective um, that I bring to this is um, you know, based on what I do every day. My workday consists of meeting with GitHub customers and helping them accomplish their inner source, open source, and security initiatives. Uh, today, we're talking about inner source and government and specifically how to build a strong foundation by focusing on uh, growing trust and modeling vulnerability. Um, which is maybe a little bit different um, than, than how we normally look at going about this. And uh, this is probably my favorite slide in, in the whole thing. Um, for, it's a sci-fi reference for those that get it. Resistance is futile. Um, and uh, there's a default route in government that we normally take, uh, appealing to authority um, and, and getting folks to do something via a, a mandate or, um, or just by the expectation and requirement to follow orders. But there are some things in that Intersource relies on that you can't force or require. You, you can't force vulnerability, for example. You can't require humility or uh, force healthy teamwork. You can force teamwork, people must work together, but you know they don't have to like it, right? Or they don't have to do it in a healthy manner. Uh, I have a toddler and he's too, I, I can't make him eat his vegetables. I can't require that uh, by mandate of the dad. Uh, I can take away all the toys and everything, but it's just not effective. I need to lead him to choose for himself to eat them. I, my role is to motivate him to do it for himself. Uh, we need to lead folks similarly in the adoption of inner source. And so that's why I've taken a look at this different approach um, versus just rolling it out, getting inner source started and identifying projects and then scaling um, we need to slow down. And there's uh, a lot of common resistance. These are things that we all know well, right? Legal concerns or reluctance to share code based on fear of embarrassment. Um, I'd like to challenge us to think about how we can lead and motivate folks to practice inner source instead of mandate them. So before we focus on how to change people's mind about security or calm their fears about sharing, um, we should spend some time on what exactly we are changing. We're trying to get people to practice inner source, but did they even have the prerequisites or foundation to stand on uh, I would propose that the what that we should focus on um, delaying the how is uh, that, you know, based on my experience and what I've seen be successful, that uh, we should focus on creating psychological safety, um, which is a, a safe place to share um, before um, actually sharing the projects, right? We, we create the platform to stand on, so to speak. All the things that we build on top of a culture without psychological safety are doomed to be ruined by bad experiences with Intersource, similar to folks' bad experiences with Agile. Oh, my manager made me report every five minutes my status, and so I don't like Agile. Well, maybe that's not a core tenet of Agile. It was just poor execution. Um, and similarly, we risk um, poor execution with, with Intersource. So what if we build developer confidence in Intersource with things like uh, bold leadership support and time allowances um, to be able to work on these things? How would things look different if we facilitated the building of a developer community first and let them self-discover, self-align, um, and self-organized to figure out what inner source opportunities there actually are versus getting them all in a meeting room to tell them what the inner source opportunities are. What if we started motivating people, uh, keyword motivating, remember the toddler, uh, people to work in a more efficient way instead of trying to incentivize them with badges or money or, or status to, to get them to inner source? Could we spend more time gaining honest value from inner source rather than figuring out how to measure it and report that it's going really, really well. How strong of an inner source foundation could we build if we focus on trust and safety and openness instead of our typical 
quantity of projects and quality of code and security of the projects. Maybe those things come later. So let's unpack a few of those things as we and talk about some action, actionables rather than just my passion for how it should be. Well, Zach said this and he said it with gusto, so it, it should be that way. No, we, we can actually dive into these things and take a look at how to, um, how to improve them. So psychological safety, um, you don't want to be punished or humiliated for speaking up with ideas or questions, concerns, or making mistakes in public. That's what psychological safety is all about. So demonstrating um, failures and, and, and sharing failures and, and learnings from those failures from successful people or people who are admired in the organization, leaders, key engineers, uh, managers, things like that. Um, if we can build a habit of that, we can establish um, a memory in, in the organization that that is a safe thing to do. Um, as long as when they do that, we are not humiliating or punishing them for those mistakes. That's why it's important that these successful people are sharing that because people will associate that success with sharing and learning from failures. Um, we can also create ground rules, which are uh, like a community code of conduct um, it, while practicing things like code reviews um, or consider adopting egoless programming axioms like you are not your code and critique code instead of people. We can also look at developer community as uh, another thing to improve here, which is building relationships between developers, especially cross team relationships. And remember I said that this is important to do first instead of building the community around the code, which also works, but when starting Intersource, this is what I wanna focus on here to create trust. Um, we want to um, do things like establish communities of practice or topical birds of a feather group, something like a monthly chat for everyone who runs on Linux or, or, or similar things for different topic areas and, and let that self-organization and discovery happen. If we set up time and space for people across teams to, to meet and learn from each other, um, then that's where this can occur, but we have to, we have to save that time uh, for them. Pair coding um, and mentorship programs as well are also great ways to build uh, those relationship networks that you need to have a developer community. Leadership support is uh, also something not to be overlooked. Um, we uh, want to build breathing room into or between the sprints um, that teams are doing. And these types of systematic controls allow for inner source to actually occur. Using um, also the, the bird's eye view, the strategic point of view of leadership who know all of the projects going on to identify areas of overlap is also a great way to identify potential for inner source. And then uh, finally, openness, what I'll say about that is, uh, is a quote that I like, and it says that organizations tend to reflect the personality and norms of their leaders. And what that means to me is, like I said before, leaders need to be demonstrating the humility and trust that we want our organizations to um, adopt culturally. So in the spirit of trust and vulnerability, I sometimes feel like I'm trying to convince people that Intersource is awesome, a bit like a salesperson. The truth is that Intersource has value whether I sell it or not. I need to remind myself every day to show organizations that I work with through the stories of um, all of my peers here at the Intersource Commons that Intersource has real value. Um, so I encourage you to continue to learn from each other throughout this conference, build those relationships, build a, a network of people who do Intersource, and remember and retell those stories um, of Intersource success in other places so that people come to realize the value. I thank you all for your time today, and I hope that you've been challenged to consider how you could improve uh, your organization's trust and vulnerability for the sake of Intersource.